We're going to take a quick look at today's business headlines. And for some help, I'm going to bring in the executive vice president of the Commonwealth Foundation, Jennifer Stefano. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? Morning, Christina. Wow. Thank you for having me. Well, the markets on Friday, I mean, bad day to close out last week and things aren't looking much better this morning with futures way down. Jennifer, what can we expect going into a new week? Well, I think nobody knows and everyone's holding their breath. This is one week where I said everyone will be bad at predictions, especially about the future. Everything is hinging on what is going to happen with the situation in Ukraine. So I think many investors are pressing pause. Um, There's not going to be as much focus um, on what the feds are going to do, although the notes from the Federal Reserve meeting in January will be coming out on Wednesday. And that should should have some flurry of action unless Ukraine hits. So it really is a week that I think investors need to just sit back and wait. Let's expand a little bit more on that Russia-Ukraine situation, because if there were to be a war, what would that look like for prices for things that we use every day here in America, like gas and food? That's a great question. Look, a a lot of our uh, gasoline exports come out of Canada, right? The Canadians. Well, guess where they get their oil and gas from? Russia. So this is this is all very intertwined in in numerous ways. So I honestly think even the greatest experts are not sure how this is going to play out, because not only do we have Russia and the Ukraine volatility, but we really don't have a lot of confidence. Americans do not have confidence in the Biden administration. And that's not a political statement. The polling shows that there is not a lot of confidence in this administration to handle difficult problems. So I think this is going to very negatively impact the economy. When the consumer confidence is down in the United States, if that extends too long and people save rather than spend, you will trigger a session. And I I mean, you just touched on it, but when it comes to the markets, the impacts obviously would be pretty detrimental. Uh, They would definitely go down. What would that look like for a lot of investors, a lot of people here? Well, I think it's certainly very troubling when you think about the majority of baby boomers are now retiring. Uh, Their health care costs are rising. They were expected to ride this market that they recovered from from the 2008 recession when they were still in the workforce. And now that that certainty that they thought was there in the markets is not going to be. However, what I will say, I won't make it all too, I won't make it too bleak. Um, It's the greatest fire sale you could ever get right now, the stock market. And I imagine uh, that sale will improve as the year goes on. Look, the the stock market, uh, the major indices are the lowest they've been in a decade. And now would be a good time uh, to do a little dollar cost averaging by the use the same amount of dollars by the same stocks month after month. Don't change it regardless of volatility. But I'll tell you, if you're at retirement age, this is going to be a very tough year ahead. I hate that you say it's going to impact the boomers again, because we did see during the 2008 recession, a lot of them lost their jobs. I've read a lot of books, a lot of articles about them, you know, having to give up their homes and now they kind of travel around looking for work. So, I mean, if they just get hit again, that's going to be really harsh on them. Um, Shifting now to look at the cruise industry, I know that COVID had a big effect on it. The CDC revised its COVID-19 guidance for cruise ship travel, and it's going to allow cruise ships to choose to participate in the CDC's COVID-19 program for cruise ships, which would require participating cruise lines to report the vaccination status classification for each ship. Now, does it make sense for ships to say their vaccination status or should um, airplanes really be the ones doing this? I think exactly zero people who want to go on a cruise care what the CDC says. Uh, There's a great article in the Wall Street Journal by a writer named Dave Seminara who wrote a magnificent piece a few weeks ago about how he took himself and his children and his family on a cruise and People who want to go out and do that lifestyle are not do they don't they don't want any more interference from the CDC. And by the way, they are not alone in my polling that I'm seeing in Pennsylvania and across the country. People are done like it was grim. We get it. Move on. I do not think this has any impact whatsoever on the cruise industry. I have to agree. I mean, if you're going on a cruise, you know, you're going to be in close quarters with a lot of people. (laughs) Jennifer, I want to know what was your favorite Super Bowl ad? Okay, so first of all, my favorite part of the whole Super Bowl was finally the homage to Gen X that we have been so, so deserving of. Hello, the 80s and 90s were front and center. They're finally fanning your ass. Hooray. So stick of the baby boomers and millennials. But the one that won the day, the one that won the day was Planters. By far blew everybody else away. Why? Because they took the truth of us 
and they made us laugh at ourselves. And if we can just have and take a moment to laugh at ourselves, I think that uh, we're going to get through this. So I just thought it was a really, really funny commercial, the planters peanut commercial. And I just want to high five them a million angels because they did a great job. I agree. I prefer the the funnier, more lighthearted ones. Although I honestly wasn't too impressed with a lot of the commercials this year. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. (laughs) Right. I mean, some of them I'm scratching my head and I'm like, yeah, (laughs) definitely confusing. I thought Expedia's was um, actually sort of sweet and and lovely in in its sentiment. Um, Yeah, no, definitely. (laughs) Thank you so much, though, Jennifer. I appreciate it.